по имени Отца и Сына и Спентаго Духа. Амин. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're going to be delving into the Old Church Slavonic phonology. In the previous video I explained the alphabet, and I'm going more in depth with the sounds in this video. Let's begin. Old Church Slavonic phonology can be complex, but with practice it can be nailed. Let's start with the consonants. By far the easiest of the, of the phonology is the consonants that are classified as follows. The labial consonants. P as in possum. B as in bee. M as in man. F as in fox. V as in vow. And ps as in tops. And it's represented by ps, ps. Next, we have the dental consonants. T as in tom. However, the sound is produced by the tongue touching the back of the teeth. Like, uh, you put your tongue uh, straight to the back of your teeth, and you say, t, t, t. This is different from English, where it's t, t, t. Because there's that breath of air coming out. But um, in Old Church Slavonic, again, I think every other Slavic language, it's t, t, t. D, as in dog, and it's the exact same of how t is made. The sound is produced by the tongue touching the back of the teeth. D, 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 not t, t, but d, d. Then we have s, as in song. S. Then we have z, as in zebra. Then we have tz, as in pats or tsunami. Pats or tsunami. Then we have tz, as in friends, and it's represented by d and z. Tz, tz, tz. Then we have n, as in no. Then we have l, as in luck. Then we have r, as in red. Now in English it's red, but you need to make sure to roll the r, like r, like they do in Latin. Red, red, red. This letter is either pronounced as f, as in fox, you know, theta, or as in th, as in thing, theta. I like to pronounce it as the TH sound, but, you know, either or, I, I don't really care what you do, to be honest. I, I don't think it matters. This letter is in specific manuscripts, but it's still considered part of uh, the canon of these letters. It's uh, pronounced like jump, j, 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 and it's represented by this G. Next, we have the velar consonants. K as in cat. G as in go. H as in Bach. You know, like the German. H. And it's represented by either an X or a KH. Then we have Xi as in box. And this is represented by KS. X, X, X. This is a little more complicated for the consonants. These are called the palatal consonants. Palatal consonants are consonants that give a Y-like sound, as in yes or key. And it's represented by either a, uh, a phonemic Y, which looks like a J, or an apostrophe. Um, now you'd be saying, Austin, why did you um, put in bold and italics he? Well, um, the Y at the end of this is actually pronounced um, like a short type E, like E, E, E. It's still touching the palate where you make a Y sound. E, 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 E. 
An example would be if I took the word tall in English and palatalize slash make the T soft. For example, tall would be its regular, but tiao would be the palatalized version. Uh, see how the difference, how this does not have a Y-like sound after the T, but this does tall, tiao, tall, tiao, tall, tiao. Um, the palatal letters are as follows. Tie, tie, sh, as in shock, it's represented by sh. Z, as in leisure, it's represented by zh. Sht, as in fishtail, it's represented by sht. Sht. Then we have ny, y, and r. And these three are represented by um, this symbol above them. Um, there can be more um, of these palatal consonants. However, they are not usually denoted with a palatalization mark as N, L, and R are denoted. So there can still be more. Like, uh, for instance, in the last video with the alphabet, we saw a few altered forms of like M and uh, uh, dobro, and uh, they were palatalized. Those indicate a palatalization. Um, if you go back, you can find those. But these three are going to be denoted with um, the palatalization symbol. Next, we get into vowels. Vowels are a little more complex because of the differences with nasals and the ever-changing years. The vowels are as followed. Here we have front, and here we have the back vowels. These will matter a lot later when we, uh, in the next video, when I go over the spelling rules, because those can get a little tricky. Let's start with the normal vowel sounds. A, uh, as in father. E, eh, as in bed. Both, all three of these make an E sound. E, as in B, O as in do, U as in boo, O as is like the O sound but possibly longer, so instead of do, it's do. And then you have this letter which doesn't exist in English, but it can be represented as an ill. It makes the sound U, U, U. Eel, eel, eel. Sort of like that. Then we have the nasal vowels. Nasal vowels are probably one of my more favorite part of Old Church Slavonic. They just the only language they exist anymore is in Polish. Like in French or Polish, certain vowels can be nasalized. These sounds are made primarily through the nose. They are as follows. M as in Ben, and it's represented by this character. N, N, N. On, as in the phrase Bon Voyage, Bon Voyage, Bon Voyage. It's represented by this character. On, On, On. And uh, if you're asking, yes, uh, the N is also pronounced as well. Um, that's what I have found a lot of people doing, and uh, that's what it's retained as. Uh, some examples are given in like certain articles or books, and um, this is what it's always been is the in at the end. Then we have uh, yodized, uh, yodized vowels. Uh, yodized vowels are vowels that have a yota connected to them that make a Y sound before the vowel. You see in, in Greek they have the letter Yota, which uh, does exist in Old Church Slavonic as an alternate form of Isia. Um, you'll see that in the previous video where we talked about the alphabet. But um, here are all the letters that have the Yota. They are as follows. U as in U and it's represented by the phonemic Y and U, U. Ya 
as in ya, and it's, uh, it's represented by the phonemic y and a. Ye, as in ye, and it's, uh, oh, I didn't put that down, it's uh, represented by the phonemic y and an e. Yen, as in yeah, but nasalized. So, uh, yeah, it would just be the exact same of yeah, you just have to give it a nasal. Yeah, yen, yeah, yen, yeah, yen. Yon, as in yonder, but nasalized. Yon, 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 yonder, yonder, yonder. Lastly, we have the airs. These are by far probably the trickiest, in my opinion. The two years, uh, as an umbrella, and it's uh, sorry, represented by the syllable, and i, as in bit, and it's rec uh, represented by the syllable. These are ultra short vowels, which means they aren't said as long as, say, o or e. One way uh, of explaining this is by the vowels in pit and pint. Notice how pit is uh, faster said than pint, or bit and beat. Notice how bit is faster to say and beat is longer to say. This is essentially what these are. Uh, and I. Uh, I. Uh, I. These are ultra short. Because the airs are ultra short, they don't have any stress patterns. Uh, that means the airs, they are never stressed. This can be a little difficult um, when pronouncing words, but it can, it can get easy. Now, here's where things start to get a little more trickier. Now, depending on what path you take, it may vary. <laughs> so, basically, during the um, evolution of Old Church Slavonic, to new church Slavonic like we have today, it's um, lost all the air sounds. So here's what I like to call the three-step um, process of which one do you want to take. The first um, step, when old church Slavonic was, you know, uh, before the airs had dropped, in the beginning, the airs had their own sounds and were always pronounced. This is what I will be using. I, in everything I pronounce, I will be pronouncing the airs as uh, i, um, you know, this is what I'm doing. But it is also correct because after a little while, the weak air sounds were dropped entirely while strong air sounds stayed. This is where I had trouble understanding it when I was learning Old Church Slavonic. Um, this is how it would look. If there is a year and it's at the end of a word, then the year is cancelled. So let, let's take this. Rab, rab, rab. If we're following this stage two of evolution, this um, year, the uh year, would be cancelled. So instead it would just be rab, 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 because this is a weak year. If the year is preceded by another year, the last year is cancelled, while the first is not. So take the word for day. Din, din, din. The last year here is cancelled because there is a year right here. So it'd be din, din, din. Um, and it's it's the same for all of them. Like it goes from back to front. That's how the rule goes. It's called Havlick's law. If a vowel is after a year, then the year is cancelled. For instance, monoyon, monoyon, monoyon. Um, since there is a vowel right here, this year is cancelled, and it's monoyon, monoyon, monoyon. This is even continued throughout a sentence following the same pattern. For instance, fusinema, fusinema would be fusinema. Fsun ma, fsun ma. This can get really tricky. 
and in the third and final process of this evolution. Because of this year deletion, the I usually became usually changed to an E or E, and a uh changed to either U or O. So, yeah, uh, because of this year deletion, the I changed either an E or E, as we can see up here. Um, din changed to Din in modern, like Russian or some other uh, Slavic languages, and E uh changed to U or O. So, yeah, um, that was a pronunciation uh, of the phonology of the Old Church Slavonic language. In the next video, we will be going over um, spelling rules to uh, help you be able to, well, essentially um, know where what consonant goes where with what vowel, and that will help introduce us to nouns and their cases. So uh, let me know your thoughts on the video. If there's something you notice that I left out or I was mistaken by, you know. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video where we will be talking about uh, spelling.